continuing with question 6 from exam 25, we're now looking at individual generation, uh, generation 5, individual 4, so 5, 4. And because he is male, he inherited a Y chromosome from his father and he inherited an X chromosome from his mother. So to understand the probability that he has a single allele of X, he can only have a single allele, and it's going to depend upon the likelihood that he got it from his mother, which depends upon the distribution of gametes from his mother. So this problem is a little bit simpler then. We haven't solved the equivalent of this individual. We haven't solved earlier so we're going to have to pay attention. We have solved equivalent of her parents. So if we go back, everybody in generation two is the same genotypes because uh, they all have the same genotype of parents. Everybody in generation three is the same except for these who come from frozen embryo stocks. So we've already solved them. That is, they're not all the same. All the males are the same or all the females are the same. So we've already solved that the grandparent of the individual concerned has the gamete distribution of five wild type to three mutant. And, oops, that's the mother. We don't, that's, that's her, should be her. So five wild type to three mutant and the, and the male here we've also already solved which is different it's three wild type to one mutant um, we don't need to know about her notice because the individual in question uh, X chromosome comes from the mother. We only have to do one generation worth here. We only need to do one Punnett square. So I can still fit it on here. So I need to do a Punnett square showing the cross between this individual and this individual to determine what distribution of gametes she can produce, which is the same as the likelihood of him inheriting one. So I'm going to do that over here. And I think I can fit it. It'd be easier with a smaller pen. I'm going to put the father on top, so three wild type to one mutant X, and the mother five wild type to three mutant here. And we may have done something similar before. Yes, we did that over here. Notice this is the same thing. Uh, let's do it again. We're going to be, it doesn't hurt to double check. So 15 chances of homozygous wild type, 5 chances of heterozygous, 9 chances of heterozygous, and 3 chances of homozygous uh, recessive. We don't need to know, we don't care which genotype she is, we want to know what kind of gametes she produces. So we have to add these up. So 15 plus 15 plus 5 plus 9. 15 plus 15, that's 30, plus 5, 35, plus 9, 44. So there'll be 44 chances of her producing a wild type X chromosome. And the chances of a mutant will be 5 plus 9 plus 3 plus 3. So 5 plus 9 is 14, plus 6 is 20. So 44 to 20. We did this before. We got the same. So far everything's the same. We can divide that by 4. So 11 wild type to 5 mutant. And notice that 11 plus 5 add up to 16. I'm just going to put 16 here. Uh, I guess there's not plus. That plus means wild type, not addition. So that means that there's 11 16th chance that she gives a wild type and a 5 16th chance that she gives an X chromosome. And what we're interested in here is a chance, is a likelihood that he has a single allele of X, that he is a single allele X, which I would designate this way. So that means it's the 5 16th. So that's easy. I can write 5 16th. That fraction cannot be reduced. And we have completed the problem.